Unpaid work within the sports industry is one of the longest ongoing debates that there is. I am never going to financially recover from this. I am aware that internships and unpaid work does you know, happen in other sectors, but my experience and therefore this video is going to be based around sports analysis. I've spoken about in previous videos how if you are wanting to get into the industry, you will need some work experience. But it seems this has been taken advantage of by clubs and now just seems normal to have to work full time for free for up to you know a season or even more than that where clubs can continue to kind of just get fresh students each and every year a true rinse and repeat rinse and repeat always repeat is that fair just the basic logic of supply and demand in my opinion has forced the wage down for analysts that are you know looking to find work within football clubs there are only ever going to be so many jobs at club level yet there are thousands of new students graduating each and every year that want those jobs it then sometimes becomes a game of chicken as to who will accept the least amount of money. Now don't get me wrong, this isn't for every club in every position, but we do know that this is a big problem within the industry. People should be paid for their work, especially if they're going in full time. Just recently I seen two Premier League teams, you know, the ones that pay their players sort of 50 to 100k a week advertising for unpaid positions. Should that really be allowed? It's quite obvious to me that not only is this slightly unfair, but it also limits the type of people that you're going to get going for this role. You're probably not going to get the best candidate, you know, so maybe some clubs, and I stress some clubs, not all clubs, maybe they don't care too much about this as long as they just get somebody. Um, because it seems that, again, some clubs do not still value the, the, you know, what an analyst can actually bring to a club. I've always thought that, and this goes for any league really, about value for money. So all teams usually have, obviously they've got a squad and there's certain squad players that, are almost there to make the numbers up they'll never actually play so the wages that they pay those guys maybe if you have one less of those in your squad just think about the value that you could bring in other areas for the team such as analysis sports science medical and all that sort of stuff so you can actually work it out so let's say you have a player on let's say five grand a week in the championship so this player is a squad player he's never really going to play and he's just there just in case and also to, to make the numbers up so that five grand a week is around a quarter of a million pound a year so the debate I'm trying to get to here is, is that better spent on that player? Maybe he never plays. Or what if that money was spent on things like analysis, sports science, medical provisions? You know, it's very interesting to see and how the ROI would differ with the same, the same amount of money spent. Okay, so why do clubs continue to get away with it? And what can you do if you are looking to break into the industry? Two very good questions. Before I continue, I do need to quickly ask you to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and even leave a comment below. So all of those things will really help the channel to grow and it'd be really, really appreciated. Anyway, back to unpaid work. So I still think the role of the analyst is somewhat undervalued, but I do see this from both sides. So let's be honest, pretty much anybody with a little bit of training will be able to film a game and also code a game. And clubs, you know, they know that. Why pay someone who is really good when the club could potentially get someone in without paying that is still relatively okay, you know, he does a job to a decent enough standard. However, to truly be a good and valuable analyst, hopefully you will be bringing much more to the table than just filming and coding. But it does beg the question, if you do have those skills and you've put a lot of time in to be able to get to that level, would you be interested in working for free? Good question. I've seen more and more clubs disguising internships as studentships or placements. So some clubs will now pay for your masters. So you, you know you're studying alongside working within the club. So you at least you do get something back, you know, for yourself other than the experience, or as well as the experience. So you get your master's degree and you are working within the club. You know, if you do want to do a master's, then this could be a good option for you. Like I said, you you kind of get in the, the education, you're not taking on the debt, and you're also embedded within that environment, which is, you know, it's very useful. Rather than just doing a master's without a club, you know, you're combining the two, you're combining the experience and the education. To me, clubs just know they'll probably fill the positions no matter what. You know, they'll list the job as a fantastic opportunity, list the salary as zero, and then the applications will just simply start flooding in. Okay, so at this point, I'm actually surprised that clubs haven't advertised a job that you actually have to pay them to go into work. Okay, maybe that is being a bit silly. As you may know, I have also done internships, and I think it's probably likely that you will have to at some point, you know, if you are starting off in your career. But I think the main thing here is if you are to do an internship, you need to make sure you are taking initiative and you can kind of be in control and make sure you are continually learning from the experience. When you first join, you probably will, you know, learn a lot of skills right at the start, but then in some clubs and in some experiences, you may find that you're just doing the same thing over and over again. 
at that stage you've basically just become cheap or free labor to the club you know so if you're not continually learning and you are just doing the same thing over and over again you've probably got to ask yourself you know is it worth it what is the point However, I understand people that are starting out, you know, maybe a little bit nervous to say something as they may think that it may, you know, affect their chances of getting a job in the future. If I was to go back and do an internship now, then I would make sure I took more of an ownership on what I was doing. Of course, I would do everything that was, you know, asked upon me, everything that, you know, was there to do, but I would also be keen to actually do other stuff as well. Let's say you found yourself in a season long internship. So, you know, at the end of the season, the chances are you will be replaced by another student. So while you're there, you might as well really get the most out of it. Be proactive in asking to take on new things. Don't just film and code one academy team for the whole year. You know, you could have learned those skills in, you know, one or two weeks. I'd personally see it as a swap. So you're giving them your time and your effort and you, you know, you are working hard here, hopefully. And in return, you want to learn as much as you can about that analysis department to set you up for, you know, your future, your future career. If you are interning as a academy analyst, you know, ask to spend some time with the first team as well, you know, a couple of days a week, spend some time with the coaches. Don't just do what they ask you to do, do more. If you're impressed, you might have a slightly higher chance of getting kept on and getting a job at the end of it. But even if you don't, at least you'll know that you've squeezed everything out of that opportunity. To me, that is the most important thing. I think you've probably got to start thinking of it a little bit more selfishly in terms of making sure you learn the skills that you want to learn. You could even go into an internship with a almost like a personal checklist of things you want to be exposed to at that particular club. Speak to your senior and basically just tell them and tell them that you're keen to learn as much as you physically can while you're in that position as an intern. If you are working hard and showing a willingness to work, then you know, you're more likely to be given more opportunities. Unfortunately, I know people that have done multiple internships, you know, unpaid work. And I also know people that just simply can't work for free, whether that be with family or travel commitments. I don't know if this will ever change, to be honest. It's pretty much the same now as it was when I was a student. The only way it would change would be if people just simply stopped applying for unpaid positions or if there was more regulation in the industry in general, you know, both of which are very, very unlikely. So if they are to continue, get what you want from them, not just what the club wants. Go into them with a plan and stick to it. Unpaid work is not really something that I agree with. I think that is pretty clear. Um, you know, I totally get that students will have to get experience and there's, it's all well, you know, volunteering a couple of days a week, etc. Um, for a short period of time. But when it comes to full-time positions, I don't think unpaid is, is the way to go. All analysts that we have at InPlay do get paid. And come the summertime, we will actually be looking to bring on more analysts to deal with the demand of the new season. So if you are interested in learning more about that, check out our social pages. You know, jobs will be advertised on there when they do become available. I have done a video previously on my experience as an intern and you know the different clubs that I worked at without getting paid. So that is linked down below. So if you do want to check that out, it's, it's there for you. And um, I'd also love to hear from anyone that's actually in an internship now, you know, feel free to leave a comment below, send me a message or an email. You know, it'd be great to hear what you're actually doing. Are you getting the most out of it? Um, is it going how you expected? Uh, so thanks again for watching this video and have a great day.